What happens when we die? Is it true that we go to the light? Then why do some of us end up stuck here, in the gray zone? I'm here to find out. Ever since filming on set with Zach Bagans for Paranormal Challenge, I became obsessed with filming for the paranormal. Uh-oh, we got Paranormal Challenge winner here. <laughs> uh. So here I am, and I'm ready to see the world. Ready to share my knowledge from all that I have learned. Why does it always seem like investigating has to be surrounded by darkness and demons? Doesn't anyone believe in the light? The next question was, who would I find to take on this paranormal journey with me? Were there actually others out there like me who want to find the dead? I was about to find the missing puzzle pieces. I was ready to prove to the world that communicating with the dead is a gift, not a curse. Blake is a veteran of the United States Army who served six years as a combat medic. The instant I asked Blake to be a part of this revolution, he said yes, and he never looked back. I've investigated hundreds of haunted locations across the nation. You never know what to expect around every corner that you turn. The paranormal no longer needs to be proven of existence. I'm here to take the paranormal to the next level. Interaction with the dead should not be feared, it should be embraced. I want answers. I want to get answers from beyond the grave. So let's begin our journey with you as my guest. Through the plains of Colorado into the high Rocky Mountains. There lies a town that has been forgotten by time. Let me welcome you to Antonito, Colorado. Population, 777. But we're here for one reason and one reason only. To possibly help solve a crime here at the River's Inn. This town was once known for mining, but it's now only used as a pit stop between New Mexico and Colorado. Was it really murder, or was it a carefully plotted suicide? Let's see if we can get some answers, not from the living, but from the dead. like a black shadow going by when there's no car outside so sometimes that will happen and you can just see the bottom of like like kind of walking up the stairs no they're actually going from the Jordan room over to the sergeant room oh. I was on this landing and um, I had heard the knock up there on that one mm -hmm. and so I thought well you know I'm gonna see if somebody's at the door mm -hmm. nobody was there and right when I got right there where you are, mm -hmm. I heard the knocking on right there. It was just like that. Playing with you. Yeah. And I thought, okay. So I knew nobody was at the front door because you can see from here. Mr. Jordan's bedroom. Okay. He was original owner of the house. Original owner of the house. Okay. Yes. In the early 1900s. Yes. Okay. 1907. And I, I believe that he committed suicide in 1922, if I remember correctly. So now you had mentioned maybe not a suicide, possibly. there's It's kind of unmarked death. People believe that it was a suicide because when they went into the barn, which is not is no longer connected to the property, but it's still standing, um, he was found shot. He was found shot. Yes. Okay. And they believe that it was suicide. However... When I, I don't, I personally do not feel a suicide type spirit. So what about like history records? Is there anything? No. And the courthouse burnt down and a lot of records are gone. That's why you don't have any pictures of Mr. Jordan or anything like that. So we have no idea. So it possibly could have been a, a murder. Right. He because he murdered. was dealing in a lot of financial things with the textiles at the time. And so, um, they they believe that there was some kind of a financial problem. And maybe well, and obviously he had a lot of money because this is the largest building in town. Yes. So what's with the mirrors? You said all the mirrors in the house are strange. Yeah, I don't like looking at them. <laughs> and that's because Just, you... 
I just don't want to see any kind of faces or spirits or anything like that. Other people have told me that they've seen them in there. Okay. And I don't want to see that. Okay. And I thought, uh, what I think is interesting about the words and things that we usually get in the answers to questions is they're intelligent answers. During the interview with April, we received our first EVP. Listen carefully. Is there intelligent answers? Is there intelligent answers? Is there intelligent answers? Was this spirit answering intelligently to April by agreeing with her comment? Yes, but you think there's definitely intel intelligent contact going on? Absolutely. Out. And sometimes you can hear like the voices, um, like little whispering things. And when you go back and you look at the EVP, you listen to the EVPs and stuff, it's like they're having a conversation underneath when you're talking. And it has to do with, oh, there they are. They're coming. Did you hear like that? that? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Yeah, know. I heard that. There's like stepping and like almost breathing behind me. Yeah. Yeah. It was that. something back here, right? Yeah. And it, to me, it sounded like a man's eye. Like he's just annoying with what's going on. <laughs> Did you hear the EVP that Blake caught as he directed the camera towards the noise? I've noticed there's crosses all over. Yes. Is that just for your safety no. or this, it came with it the house? It was already in here. This is this particular spot you've always had yeah, problems. Yeah, and this is the spot right here. Okay. This is the bad. You didn't, you stand in there and it's just not great. I see you turn your head down. Is it because yeah, it's just bad energy? Yeah, I don't like it. Really? Just, I never go in there after I put the stuff in there. I just, this is where I've started getting, I had severe headaches. Severe headaches, very sick, standing right in there. Mm -hmm. When I put all that stuff in there, I was just like, I'm done in here. I don't barely come in here at all. Really? I think, I think personally, it's some sort of weird vortex or something. I think we're sitting on something and nobody can explain that. Yeah, but I think whatever it is, is right right here. Mm -hmm. The bad, like bad vibes. You feel right like, like almost like an energy barrier from like, not necessarily right here, but it starts a little before. Isn't it. that weird? saw the it was a ghost in a pinstripe suit you know it's so interesting because i mean how long have i been standing here maybe two minutes right yeah, if probably. that just a minute ago not even a minute ago a few seconds ago i started getting an upset stomach yeah she started getting these things like scared um did you hear that yeah someone's behind me did you hear that you guys all hear that yeah no, you all three it. shook your yeah. head yes <laughs> <laughs> huh well see you know what it was a rock. Something just threw a rock at me. Hmm. Yes, that's what I thought it was a rock too. Who's throwing rocks? That's not very nice. Like scared. Um, Do you hear that? Like scared. Um, Do you hear that? Like scared. Um, Can we at least see the barn where Mr. Jordan was found? I don't know. But the lady, the lady who actually, yeah, it's on a different property. She was really reluctant. This was a huge property of blank yes. land. Yeah, it was probably hundreds and hundreds of acres. April informs us of the longest living resident of Antonito. She also happens to know most of the town's history. The history about those who did die in this area building the railroad is no longer documented. Uh, there was a lot of records there, and a lot of people maybe wanted things changed a little bit. The, courthouse was burnt down wow. and um, they won't say that it was arson but we do have um, chupacabra sighting of course we have lots of the screaming lady they call it la llorana and like a banshee type of thing we also have legends of not really a bigfoot but some sort of big animal thing it's mm -hmm. been seen just south of here crossing the highway in the evenings mm -hmm. then we have the cattle mutilations that some people say are from the ufo we do have a ufo watchtower in our uh, valley this this is the most amazing place you've ever been i was starting to wonder wonder if i had led us right into some portal or some black hole this place seems to have it all but for now i was more concerned about the investigation nightfall was right around the corner and it was almost time to communicate with the entities that reside at the River's Inn. DVR footage, I was watching it um, at base camp. And first of all, the DVR cam started to fall, but then the whole tri I believe the whole tripod went down. We're with the owners, we're going up right now. Let's see what we all find together to debunk that none of us were upstairs, right? So camera's on the ground. When we entered the Jordan room, we saw that our night vision cam had completely fallen off of the tripod. 
I know that those cameras were secure. I want to show you the footage of the camera as it fell off the tripod. Before the camera falls, we see this giant ball of light enter and then exit the camera frame. This is not dust, because dust on night vision appears like snow flurries. If this would have been an insect, you would have been able to see its wings. But what we can determine is that it is an orb because of its perfect shape and direct flight path. We cannot determine the exact amount of time that it took for this to fall because the camera stops recording for what we assume to be only seconds. We believe the time and date indicators are jumping because of high EMF levels. Thus, what is affecting the digital jumping on the time and date indicators. Notice due to the jolting, it looks as if the camera not only gets knocked down, but then gets stuck on something. But it appears to have been a struggle for whatever or whoever was removing it. We decided it was time to begin the investigation inside of the Jordan suite since the camera just fell. What? Uh, um, the EMF is reading a 73.3. This is by far the highest reading I've ever had on a millimeter. If this is in fact an entity tearing down this camera, we have to assume that there's a high electromagnetic field around the camera. EMF or electromagnetic fields are said what ghosts are made up of. High EMFs can affect electronics, like drain batteries or cause electronic malfunctions. Are you over there by crystal? Holy what the hell? What the heck? Did it freeze? Look at what it froze on. 566 Fahrenheit. It's not 566 degrees Fahrenheit in here. Say what? It says that it's 566 in here. After these record-breaking EMF spikes, suddenly the Jordan Suite goes silent, so we decide to do a spirit box session inside of the Jordan Suite bathroom. The spirit box is basically a radio box that can sweep up to 10 stations per second. The rapid sweeping creates this pure white noise, allowing the dead to manipulate the white noise into words. The bathroom of the Jordan Suite was said to be Mr. Jordan's favorite room because of his custom-made bathtub. Is anybody in here with us? You can talk to me through the spirit box. Can you come up to me? <laughs> No, it's speaking. It's home. What did it say? Home? Is this your home? It's home. It's home. It's home. It's home. Crystal? Did it say my name? Crystal? 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 Do you hear screaming? Who's screaming? Was Mr. Jordan murdered? Was this in fact a spirit confirming Mr. Jordan was murdered? Was Mr. Jordan murdered? Was Mr. Jordan murdered? Was Mr. Jordan murdered? If this knocking that we hear was heard live at the time of the spirit box session, one of us would have tagged it out loud. Did Mr. Jordan kill himself? Interesting. Instead of acknowledging a suicide, the spirit answers with, we're fine. Would you guys rather talk to Blake? Maybe he'll maybe he'll respond to Blake. Maybe he'll maybe he'll respond to Blake. Maybe he'll maybe he'll respond to Blake. They're just not sure. Was this a spirit confirming that yes, they would rather speak to Blake? For some reason the communication inside the Jordan suite completely stopped. We decided it was our best bet to move on to other areas of the house to see if we could keep communicating. Isn't this where we were told that there was a baby? Did you go downstairs? That was weird. I just got some light anomaly that looked like a spider that dropped in between the doorway. This is one of the most incredible things I've ever caught on film. I've never caught anything like this before. Watch carefully as this plasma begins to form and fall. To me, it appears to be in the shape of a face falling from the ceiling onto the bed. 
Plasma is a mass that can be created from an electromagnetic field. And to be more clear, plasma is matter that is created by molecular bonds and charged ions. We hear a noise, so we decide to head into the room adjacent from the Jordan Suite. Just while passing through, Blake happens to have his camera pointing into the direction of the mirror which is facing the hallway. But he had no idea that he had captured a manifestation through the mirror. Is this why April's afraid of mirrors at the end? I decided to try communication through the ovulus. It's a machine that creates phonetic responses through EMF frequencies in the room. The ovulus only has a 2,000 word dictionary. If you guys are in here, can you come touch this? It'll make it beep. I don't have any kids yet, but I do. I want some kids someday. We're sorry? Why are you guys sorry? They're old school. You don't have any kids yet. Oh, we're, we're sorry. sorry. You're right. How many kids do you have? A daughter. A daughter. A daughter. A daughter. What's your daughter's name? Ginio. Like the turkey. Daughter's name is Turkey. <laughs> Har, har, har. Are you serious? So it's joking with us? So should I say har, har, har back? <laughs> mock me? Did it just say mock me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm mocking you, har, har, har. Are you a male or a female? You a boy or a male? Female. Female? Female. Are you the only woman in the house? The activity on the second floor subsides, so we head down to the main floor. What was that? Did you hear that? That was weird. What do you think that was? What did it sound like to you? Check. Debunk. Let me check with April. Blake goes to confirm with April that the loud bang wasn't her, but we were positive that she had been in the innkeeper suite all night. Hey, April? Yeah? Did you just sneeze or anything? Did you make any noise at all? Not that I can think of. No? I was just sitting here. What was that? What was that? It was just the bunk that. It wasn't April. I'm laying my head back right now because something is around me that's not making me feel very good. Who's making me feel sick? I just captured an EVP, or an electronic voice phenomenon. An EVP is also known as a recorded ghost voice. You know how I feel about darkness, but could something be warning me about a demon that's making me feel sick? Something in here is not making her feel very well. I'm not sure what was making me so nauseated but it had continued for more than an hour. I headed towards the front door to see if some fresh air would help me feel better. When I looked at our DVR and noticed the basement cam was falling, just like the one upstairs did. But shut the front door. You're shitting me. Back it up, let me see this. Okay, so apparently something just tore down our DVR camera in the basement. Let's just watch this, shall we? So it's like struggling to take that down, right? Look at that. Holy... Oh, shit. Immediately, I went into panic mode. I was determined to find out whatever had knocked our second camera over. Why'd you throw a rock at me earlier? I think you're an asshole for doing that. It's not very nice. I don't throw rocks at people. But it's so strange. After hours of investigating the basement, the only interaction that we had was one answer on the ovulus. What's your name? Tommy. So here's the weird part. Tommy is not a word that's included in the ovulus dictionary. We definitely had a successful night for communication. They certainly wanted to make themselves known. I have never in my life had a camera fall during an investigation. And for it to happen not once, but twice at the same location, this is crazy. I can't lie, I have to say I was pretty excited to see the sunrise. And the big question of the night, did we actually solve the mystery of Mr. Jordan? Was he really murdered? Was Mr. Jordan... Murder?
So many amazing things happened. I was so excited that I got to experience so much intelligent communication. Crystal? Investigating is so much more than just seeing what's in the dark. It's communicating, it's understanding what actually happens after death. And it's getting answers to questions that are definitely beyond the grave. So here's my farewell to Antonito, knowing that there will always be a piece of us left behind.